Hey, what's going on everyone? We're gonna be talking about wrist flexibility and what you can do to help fix it, specifically if you're doing front squats or cleans or thrusters and you get lower back pain. So you get lower back pain, you work on your lower back, but then it keeps coming back, right? So we're not solving the problem, we're just taking care of whatever is showing that you have a problem. So if I'm here in a front rack position and my elbows drop and that bar is here, that weight's in front of me, my lower back has to work a lot harder than if that bar is sitting up above my collarbone, it's up on my shoulders. So one way we can test that is we go nine degrees at the armpit, triceps parallel to the ground, nine degrees at the elbow, I'm gonna grab every finger, pinky and thumb included, and pull this down. Now, I look like I'm okay, but believe it or not, I should be at 60 degrees. So we should end up with a 60 degree angle. My hand should go past parallel to the ground, it doesn't. So I'm fighting. Now what I feel on this forearm is a stretch. And that's important, we wanna find out what we feel. Now when I do it on this arm, now I broke and dislocated this wrist, so it's a little different. I'm gonna grab my thumb and my pinky, I'm gonna pull it down, and see it's a lot worse than the other side. That is really hard for me to get to. I feel a mild stretch, specifically from my thumb, but I feel mostly a pinch going on. So we can do two different things. Now if we have a stretch in our forearm, you can sit here and do all this stuff and it will work. What I prefer to do, just to make it a little bit more interesting and to load it, you can grab a light dumbbell. I'm gonna brace my forearm. I'm gonna let that roll all the way to my fingertips, hang out there, and then use my other hand to help me on the way up. So we're just loading eccentrically. This is a 10 pound dumbbell, you can go heavier. I'm gonna feel this big stretch with the load. Use my other hand to help my way back up. I recommend doing three sets of 10. You can ramp it up to 15, 20 with a light weight, or you can try and go a little bit heavier and keep it light. But we want it, or excuse me, keep that heavier and go less reps, eight to 10. But we want to feel that stretch at the end. If it's heavy, we see a lot of people do this, where they short change it. They don't let it go all the way to their fingertips and get that nice stretch going on. This should not be, be, be painful, it just should be a stretch. Now my right wrist, I get a pinch. So if I stretch it, all I'm doing is jamming bone on bone. There's some type of, uh, excuse me, heart tissue thing going on there. This is the wrist I've broken dislocated, so it's a little different. So I'm gonna use this band to try and manipulate the joint a little bit. So I'm gonna get that band just above where my hand and forearm meet. I'm gonna get as much pressure, as much band tension as I can. I'm gonna keep my elbow locked out, that's important. I'm gonna seesaw back and forth, hit different ranges of motion. Again, this should not be painful, all right? A little irritation might happen, but we shouldn't cause pain in this where afterwards it feels worse. I'm just trying to manipulate that joint a little bit so when I bring my wrist back, I don't go bone on bone or hard surface on hard surface here. And again, accumulate about two minutes per side. That's kind of a standard anytime we do any joint manipulation or deep stretching. We want to try and go two minutes per side. Try it out, retest it, see if it helps that front squat.